Tinibu leave Igbos alone. Iwanyango exposes a touching fault to Nigerians. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those joining us for the very first time, this channel is dedicated in bringing to you hottest gist about Nigerian politicians and celebrities. You can support us by subscribing to our channel, like our videos, comment and share. Turn on the bell icon to get notified on time whenever I publish a new content. At this moment, let's continue. So guys, we all know that what Tinibu is doing in this country is totally wrong. Destroying the Igbo's properties in Lagos. Even the computer village has been destroyed. The funniest thing about this issue is that all this is only happening in Tinibu Tenor. The Igbo's are being marginalized in this country, most especially in Tinibu's Tenor. Like what Dele Momodu said about this issue of destroying the Igbo's properties in Lagos. If you don't want the Igbos, why don't you allow them to be on their own? Dile Momodu said, Before I will continue, let's see what Emmanuel Iwanyangu said about this whole issue. One thing is clear. In 1914, when Lugard amalgamated Nigeria, Nigeria have got ethnic nationalities, people with different culture, people with different language, People with different religion, they were, were not the same. It was clear to us at that time that the survival of Nigeria will depend on our ability to manage our differences, to manage all these differences we have. And of course, our forebears before independence were able to manage it. The military interve inter intervention in 1966 was absolutely very unfortunate. It was the saddest thing that ever happened to Nigeria. Unfortunately, that is blamed, unfortunately, blamed on Igbos. But there was no reason for Igbos to talk with that government, but it was blamed on us. Now, that particular government, before independence, they had a constitution, a true federal constitution, a constitution that could actually apply and try and bring without a lot of strength to a people who have diverse uh, background like Nigeria. We have a true federal constitution in 1960, 1963, and that worked for us. Later on, they changed to unitary constitution, which is not right. Now, uh, that is why we in Iboland, we are saying, please, let, there, let us have a true federal constitution. What we are operating today is a unitary government. It doesn't work for a, 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 a people who have a diverse uh, uh, background. Take other, many countries. If you go to a place like Britain, you have Scotland, you have Wales, you have England, you have... They have a constitution that binds them together and is working for them. It's not a unitary government. If you go to America even, America, we are supposed to be following American constitution. But what they have is not a unitary government. Every state in America have got a certain level of autonomy. Now, I believe that until any, I believe that the government of uh, uh, Bola and Metinibu should take steps to see if we can actualize this uh, restructuring of Nigeria. Without a proper restructuring, Nigeria will continue to have problems. There is no way this country can survive. Today, everybody is talking of presidency, presidency, presidency. In a restructured Nigeria, the presidency will not attract so much attention as it does today, because today every power is uh, vested on the president. As I said last time, for example, a child who is born in uh, South South or South East in the past 30 to 40 years doesn't have not even seen a train before. He doesn't know what it's all about. But we have borrowed money, and the whole money we borrowed was invested in railway line from Western Nigeria to Northern to South to Northwest. So these are some of the problems because the people in power, the person in power, I mean the people South East was not in power, South South was not in power. You know, these are some of the problems we have. Now, coming specifically to one of Igbo's, our own is very serious. It's very, very serious. We feel very sad about what is happening to us. 
When we came together as one country, Lagos became a capital. Naturally, in every country in the world, people all work together to develop their capital. The moment in 1914, once Lagos was made the capital of Nigeria, it was the duty of all Nigerians to come together to develop our capital. Our capital, Lagos, became the pride of uh, our country. Igbos came in and participated. I must tell you, Igbos, by nature, once they say they are with you, they are with you. They are people who, when they make a commitment, they keep to it. Igbos played, they did a lot to develop the place. We are not saying that he was built Lagos alone. No, they couldn't have built Lagos alone. We didn't say that he, there were no other inhabitants. There were. So the point is that, the, but you see, right. such, they, did, they played a major role in shaping the destiny of Lagos today. Yes, now, the same thing with Abuja. When Abuja was made the federal capital, it, 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 it was moved in. Now, today, it was have been uh, uh, black, it was have been abused and being insulted, no, called all sorts of names, called greedy because of their efforts to develop Abuja and Lagos. Even up to a point that people are now saying because in the last election, a candidate will be it will be who was supported by a uh, majority of Igbos. Mark you, not not every Igbo man voted for P2B. Because this is a democracy. There were Igbos in APC. Igbos in APC voted for APC candidates.